we went to a little bar in downtown Cave Creek and you could pay, I think it was like 50 bucks to get on an amateur bowl, you know, not the real rank stuff, but like anybody can sign a waiver and do it. And my uncle was out here with us vacationing. He's like, you won't do it, you know, nudging me. He's one of those uncles, you know, like you won't do it. And I was like, well, I bet you I will now. <laughs> so I signed, a, signed my life away and gave him 50 bucks. To ride a bull, you gotta ride it for eight seconds for it to qualify. The first bull I rode that night, I actually covered for eight seconds, which was hilarious. And my, my family was going berserk. From that night, I got hooked. So Wednesday nights were kind of like the practice nights, and then Friday nights were like jackpot nights. Money gets pooled up from everybody paying in to ride, right? And then whoever wins gets that jackpot. I guess you can call it gambling, but <laughs> gambling with your life. <laughs> when I started winning money over at those jackpots, some of these guys that are pro that are there practicing and stuff, I started talking to some of these guys, and they're like, you should look into getting your pro card for the PRCA, man, and away it went. When you do get a good bucking bull, you know, you get in sync with it, you ride it just perfect. Like, no matter how many thousands of people are in the stands, like screaming, like, ah, it's just, you can't hear nothing. And it feels like slow-mo. Obviously, it's only eight seconds, but that eight seconds feels like an hour. There's nothing like that feeling, man. We're in some sports, you get trophies, right? These are our trophies. We don't buy our buckles, we win them. So, <laughs> it's a fun time. It's a short-lived career, because, <laughs> Man, uh, you can only take a few wrecks from getting hit by a 2,200 pound bull. <laughs> During that time, I was a ranch hand on a few ranches out in Rio Verde. That's tough work, man. Getting up before the sun comes up, getting all the feed around to the horses or the cattle, whatever they had. And how I kind of learned how to rope it, we'd be, uh, at the end of the night after the rodeo, somebody would always have like an old rope in the back of the pickup truck. And we'd be bored out in the parking lot, you know what I mean? And, roping each other's like uh, trailer hitches, you know, the receiver with the, the little ball receiver. People just showing you how to do it. And like, once you learn, it's like tying your shoes, really. I was done working at the ranches. It was just killing me. So I got a job at the feed store and um, I started delivering the hay. The feed store that I was at needed a truck driver. So I got my CDL in like, I think it was four weeks. I've always wanted to drive trucks, like, cause my grandfather drove trucks. It was always a thing like, man, it'd be really cool to drive a big truck. I just didn't know what I wanted to do yet for a career. I was driving local, I wasn't really happy with like how much money I was making. And it's just a lot of things mentally going on with me. I was, I was depressed and had a lot of anxiety and just wanted to get moving with life but didn't know how. I was so against like talking to a therapist, I don't know why. I just, I was like, oh, is a therapist gonna help me? They've never been through what I've been through. But it's not about that, it's just about addressing was bothering you, you know? And even if you have to go on medication, I was always against that too. Like, they're never gonna put me on a happy drug. I don't wanna, you know, I don't want that happy pill. But it's not about that, because brains, literally your brain can be chemically imbalanced and like not make a certain chemical that it needs to like make you feel normal. At one point, I just didn't wanna wake up and go to work, you know? Like, uh, it got pretty bad, but I got the help that I needed and I don't regret it. So just talking to somebody was the best thing I could have done. The more you bottle it up, like it's just, it's never gonna go away, you know what I mean? It's just sweeping it under the rug, you know, that phrase, like it's always gonna be underneath that rug, you know what I mean? It's amazing, honestly, Work, working for night. It really changed my outlook on a big company because I was really getting, I was really nervous. When you work with a team that is like so close to you, like my, my dispatcher, terminal manager, like, it's really cool. You're hearing from them all the time. They're always making sure you're all right. You know, everything's okay with the truck. Or if something does happen with the truck, if it's taken care of right away. And they changed my mind, dude. Like, Knight really amazed me on how well they take care of their drivers. And I get to travel across this whole country. And like, I've been to a few states traveling with the rodeo and stuff. But man, I literally go to every state. You know what I mean? It's, and it's great, and I'm getting paid to do it. I get to travel and get paid to do that. And it's, I get to make my own schedule, pick what states I want to go to, and it's really been a huge blessing that I became a driver for night.